Hey guys, so in this series, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the chain ladder method that's used as an actuarial loss reserving technique. So if we just jump straight over to Wikipedia, as I've done here, and we'll have a quick look just to set the scene here. So the chain ladder or development method is a prominent actuarial loss reserving technique. The chain ladder method is used in both the property and casualty and health insurance fields. Its intent is to estimate incurred but not reported, or sometimes that's referred, or often that's referred to as IBNR claims and project loss and ultimate loss amounts. The primary underlying assumption of the chain ladder method is that historical loss development patterns are indicative of future loss development patterns. And if we scroll down a bit, it shows an example here. So you can see this claims triangle here, and it says, first, loss is either reported or paid and compiled into a triangle. So this obviously, where the rows represent accident years and the columns represent valuation dates. And then for example, this figure, which is corresponds to this figure here, represents the loss amounts related to claims occurring in 1998, valued as of 24 months. So what you'll find in insurance is that claims develop over time. So you won't often won't know until years, potentially decades for some lines of business down the track of what your total ultimate loss for that accident year actually is. So we're not going to use this data. We're going to use this data over here and I'll put it in a dictionary. I'll copy that into the video description so you can grab it. And I'll just put that in there already instead of uh, typing that out in front of you, which would have taken too long. And then all these mp.nans, if you haven't figured already, are essentially just these blank spaces down here in the triangle that we saw here. But as I said, it's a different triangle. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to read this into a pandas data frame, and I haven't mentioned it yet. If we scroll up, these are the libraries that you'll need to import for this series. So go ahead and import them or grab those packages if you need them. Now, what we'll do is we'll call our data frame triangle. And all we do is simply just read that in. So we go PD data frame and we just pass in D, which is our dictionary. And we'll take a quick look at that. So as you can see here, each one of these lists in the dictionary is one of the columns. So when we put it in the data frame, we have We'll clean this up a bit in a second, but we have our origin year, which corresponds to the accident year that was in the Wikipedia um, page, this column here. And then you can, uh, you can think of this as years developing over one, two, three, four, five years out to 10. So what we'll do here is we want our origin to be the index at the moment is just a column and this is an index of the data frame down here so we'll go triangle dot set index we go triangle origin so we pick up our origin com column and we go in place equals true we'll run that and you can see that the origin column is still in there which we don't want so we can just go del triangle origin, run that, and then that gives us what we want. So we've got the origin set as the index, and then each column um, up here that corresponds to the development year or development period, however you want to think of that. And now what we'll do is just to get a bit of an idea of what that looks like visually, we can plot that and we can plot it pretty easy that since it's in a pandas data frame. So if we go triangle and what you can do is you can just go dot plot and we'll just go fig size equals say 12, six PLT dot show. If we run that, it'll plot something, but the way it plots that in pandas is you can see that it's plotting the um, column. So it's not really how we want it. So if we can, if we transpose our data frame to make the rows the columns and the columns the row, we can go dot t 
and run that and then we can see here how each periods develop so there is some variation in how they've developed but that's what we'll do once we get further into this series is that's um, what we're trying to work out what I guess is the most likely or the chain ladder defined development of each of these years and if we pick out one of these here so say for example 2008 you can see that's the longest line because if we go back up here, that was the first year in the origin column and that's had longer to develop. And then we, if you come down here and see 2017, that's only got the one entry here. So that'll be this really short line down. Oh, well, it's just gonna be a, a point. But 2016 is a better example of this color line here. Um, you can see there it's quite short because it just hasn't had the time to develop like the um the 2008 origin year obviously so we'll wrap this video up here what we'll do in the next video is we'll start calculating the factors in the chain ladder method so this is where we will actually start kicking off using the chain ladder method this was just to visualize um and read in our data and we'll have a look at the chain ladder method in the next video so i'll see you there